Hi, I'm Kimmy Bruner, Ask the Expert columnist for Machine Quilting Unlimited magazine. When I go to shows, one of the questions that I'm most often asked by students is how do I do stitch in the ditch? It seems like everybody struggles with stitch in the ditch. How do you keep your stitches in the ditch? Do you stitch on the high side or the low side? How do you choose thread color? It seems like it's really a big mystery to a lot of people. And while it's not the most exciting stitching technique in the world, I do find it to be a really great way for me to get to know my quilt. As I work through the quilt doing my stitch in the ditch work, I'm finding out where I have fullness. I'm finding out where there are issues that I need to deal with. I'm using my stitch in the ditch to straighten out the bones or the skeleton of my quilt. So I end up with a nicer finished product. Let me show you how to do stitch in the ditch work. What you want to start with is a good straight template. It's really difficult to stitch a straight line without a template. So get yourself a template. And if you're going to use a template, you need to have an extended base on your machine. If you don't have an extended base and you're trying to balance that big template on that little tiny throat plate, you're going to have a lot of trouble with the template wanting to be like a teeter-totter. And sooner or later, that teeter-totter is going to flip right under your hopping foot and you're going to smack that template with your needle and then it's all over but the shouting. So get yourself a template, get yourself an extended base, and have a little bit of patience. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing you want to think about is thread color. I'm stitching a red stop border in the ditch and this is the color that more accurately matches my fabric color but this is the color that's going to disappear more so it's the color I'm going to choose. Let me show you what I mean. If we look at this thread on this red it matches pretty closely but when we lay that red out it kind of shows a lot and if I weeble and wobble at all on my ditch stitching it's really going to show and I'm going to be very unhappy with it and I'll have to rip. Now this color at first glance obviously looks way too whiny, too burgundy, not the right red. However, when you lay it down on that red it just disappears right in. It just drops into the fabric and melts away. That's what I want for my stitch in the ditch thread color. I want a fabric that's just going to blend right in that you really won't even see. That way I can make a couple of mistakes and not have them stand out like sore thumbs. Now let me show you how to do the actual stitch in the ditch. Okay, I'm going to start by stitching in the ditch this nice long seam line which connects my stop border to the bottom or to the border of the quilt. It's really important before you start doing a lot of heavy quilting in your quilt, it's really important to get those straight lines nailed down so they aren't shifted or pulled out of place by your tight quilting. So I start with, with each pass by looking at my straight lines. What do I need to stitch down before the heavy quilting starts? In this case, I don't want to do any stitching in this border before I've gotten this straight line straightened out and stitched down. Because once it's nailed into place, I can do anything I want up here and it's not going to shift this at all. So to line this straight line up, I'm going to use a little cheater method and I'm going to use the straight edge of my straight ruler to help guide me to line this straight line up. Because if this is straight and this is lined up with this, it's all going to be straight in the end. So I'm going to lay my ruler down and I'm just going to look to see. Does my line wobble up? Does my line wobble down? If it wobbles up, I'm just going to tug on that fabric a little bit to slide it this way. If it kind of blurps down a little bit, then I'm going to tug a little bit this way to, again, to line it up with this straight edge of the ruler. Let me show you how to do a machine start and stop. I'm going to drop my needle right dead in that corner. I'm going to bring up my hopping foot and bring up my bobbin thread. Take a tiny little stitch right next to the hole where I came up, bring my needle up, use my top thread and bobbin thread, which I'm gripping tightly, to just shift the fabric a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean by like maybe one thread in the fabric. I'm going to shift it again, tiny little stitch, shift it again, tiny little stitch, shift and stitch, shift and stitch. I'm going to do maybe four or five stitches, little tiny ones, all in one spot. I'm going to bring my ruler over, make sure that line looks nice and straight. When I stitch in the ditch, I'm going to set my, sit, or my stitches per inch at 10 stitches per inch simply because it's easier to rip out 10 stitches per inch when I make a mistake than it is to rip out 14 stitches per inch. And I'm going to use regulated uh, stitch mode and I'm going to stitch on the low side of the ditch. 
What I mean by that is if you were to turn my quilt over, you would see that all of my seam allowances have been pressed to this side of the seam. This is my high side. This is my low side. If you stitch in the ditch on the high side, you're going to see every single one of those stitches. If you stitch on the low side, your stitches will just melt right into that seam line and blend away. So you stitch on the low side. You are never in a hurry. Stitch in the ditch is not fast. So slow down. Keep those stitches right in that ditch. And when it's time to quit, let me show you how to hand tie in case you are a hand tire rather than a machine uh, stop and starter. When you hand tie, you want to pull up your bobbin thread, give yourself a nice long length of both top thread and bobbin thread simply because it's a whole lot easier to hang on to when you have excess length rather than to try and start and stop a tiny little bit of thread. I'm going to bring my machine back over so we can use that light. This is a side loading spiral eye needle. Here's the packaging, spiral eye side threading needles. You pop that thread in right through the opening in the side, easy as can be. I'll show you how to do it. Lay your needle down in between the two threads. Tie them in a nice tight knot around that needle. You have the needle there to create just a little bit of slack to make it easier to pop that thread knot into the layers of your quilt. I've tied a nice tight knot. I'm going to pop my thread ends, thread ends into that nice little side slit. Pop it right in. Now I'm going to put my needle back into the hole that I last came up on when I finished stitching that little line of stitches. I'm going to drop it down so it goes through the top and batting layer of the quilt, but not out the back. I'm going to bring it back up about an inch away. And remember how I created a little bit of slack in there by tying the knot around the needle? I'm going to pop, and that slack is going to allow my thread to just pop, or my, I'm sorry, my knot will just pop right back down into the layers of the quilt. Snip the thread ends. Now you can't see where I ended my line of stitching because my knot is buried. The end is secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Those stitches are not going to come out, and my quilt will live happily ever after. I hope those tips helped you with your stitch in the ditch work. Like I said, it's not the most exciting type of quilting ever, but it sure does give a crisp, professional finish to your quilt that you just can't get any other way. Remember that the secret is to move slowly and carefully. Stay in that ditch. If you need to stop and reposition your hands or reposition the ruler, that's easy. Just stop with your needle down so that your machine doesn't drift away. Stop with the needle down, reposition all you want, and then off you go. There's no hurry. You don't get a blue ribbon for getting to the end of the line fastest. So take your time, stitch in the ditch, and your quilt will turn out great. Have a great day. Thanks.